Hi, boys and girls. We're John and Deborah Carr. We want to welcome you to Children's Ministry at WCCI. Pastor Dollar and Pastor Taffy, they send their love, their hugs, and they want you to know that they're praying for you and your family every day. And they're super excited that you get to celebrate with us on this very special day. This is Palm Sunday. Woohoo! You know, that's the day that Jesus, we celebrate that Jesus came as a rescuer. You're probably like, why do you have this hat on? Because it was a, it's a time of celebration. He rode the town on a donkey. People came with their leaves and threw their coats on the ground. And if they had party hats in those biblical times, they probably had one like this, although I don't think they did. They were ready to celebrate. Messiah had come. Woo but boys and girls, not everyone was excited. I'll let Pastor John tell you about those people. Hi, boys and girls. When Jesus came as the Messiah, he wasn't at all what the people expected him to be. Many looked at Jesus and said, what a sissy. He sure ain't much of a man. What kind of Messiah is he? Jesus never said a word. He took all that abuse, boys and girls, and he took it in stride. They ridiculed him. They humiliated him. They spat upon him. They even made a crown of thorns, boys and girls and to make him a laughing stock of the world. But you know what? Satan thought he had it. Satan thought he had won. Satan thought he had it all, boys and girls. And that's not the case. Because you know what? Jesus on Calvary put Satan underneath his feet. And that's ultimately where it happened. And the people said, what a man. Welcome, Center Church, Little Lamb. Grasshoppers, turtle doves, and mighty conquerors, and praises. Enjoy the video and have a great day. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Sometimes, so I cover my eyes, but that's so silly. Cause God is always with me, so I stand up tall. Stand up tall. Remember, He is strong. He is strong. I won't be afraid. Be afraid. God is always with me. Fear.
Okay, just a little more water. There we go. Oh, <laughs> hi, friends. Stormy Jane, it's our friends. <laughs> hi, everybody. I'm Carrie, and this is my best dog, Stormy Jane. We were just doing a little gardening, making sure everything looked nice, because today is a very special day, celebrating someone really special. It's Palm Sunday. <laughs> Stormy Jane loves Palm Sunday. I think we should tell them the story. What do you think, Stormy? Stormy, where are you going? Oh, you got a palm branch. Smart dog. You need a palm branch if you want to tell the Palm Sunday story. Hey, do you have your palm branch? Raise it high. Let's wave it around. <laughs> okay, let's tell the story. Palm Sunday started in the city of Jerusalem, and it was like any other Sunday. The townspeople were all going about their normal day until someone announced that Jesus was coming to town. They were so surprised and so excited. They had heard of Jesus and that he can do anything. He made a storm stop just by saying stop. They had heard that he made sick people better and that he could feed a whole group of people with only a little bit of food. Yay, Jesus! Everybody wave your palm branches. Jesus can do anything. He is so special. And if he was coming to town, then they needed to do something special to celebrate him. So some people got palm branches and some took off their coats and laid them in the street to give Jesus a special place to ride. And then they saw him. He was here. They waved their palm branches. Let's wave our palm branches, ready? And then they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, yay, Jesus. Can you say that? Try it. Hosanna, Hosanna, yay, Jesus. Again, Hosanna, Hosanna, yay, Jesus. The people were celebrating Jesus because they knew he was so special. Everyone was so excited for Jesus to be there. Moms and dads and grandparents and teachers and children, they were celebrating Jesus. Let's celebrate him too. Wave your palm branches. Jesus is so special. And Jesus is alive today and loves when you and me and all of us celebrate him. So one more time, all together, let's say Hosanna, Hosanna, yay Jesus, as loud as we can. Are you ready? One, two, three. Hosanna, Hosanna, yay Jesus. <laughs> hey there, Ollie. Ollie, tell me, who is alive? Jesus is alive. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who is alive? Jesus is alive. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. Happy Palm Sunday. <laughs> Bye. I am alive forever and ever. Revelation 1.18. I am alive forever and ever. Revelation 1.18. God loves us and he gave his only son he is awesome Jesus nothing can stop him he's too strong yeah we're singing Jesus is alive he's alive oh yeah everybody celebrate Jesus is
Good afternoon, boys and girls. My name is Akia Anderson. I'm a teacher in World Changes Children's Ministry. I would like to share a scripture with you that I use in troubled times. Philippians 4, verses 4, 6 through 7. Be full of joy in the Lord always. I will say again, be full of joy. Do not worry about anything, but pray and ask God for everything you need. And when you pray, always give thanks. And God's peace will keep your hearts and minds in Jesus. The peace that God gives is so great that we cannot understand it. I encourage you to practice the following instructions in these verses when you feel worried or afraid. And God's peace will protect your heart and your mind. Hey, this is Jacob. Or, you know, just Jake. Is everyone okay? There was like an earthquake or something in my room. I didn't feel it when I was outside my room, but then when I came in the room, everything was turned upside down. My table, my bed, also known as my couch, my Ferrari, my sculpture. That's better. I don't know how this could have... Wait a second. Is there such a thing as room quake <laughs> yeah that must be it anyway i'm supposed to talk to you today about something called humility humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve so that means like doing stuff for others i guess like my friend chris he's really good at humility i mean he humiliates me like all the time am i saying that right humiliate humiliate Humiliate. He shows humility to me. He's super busy, but he always takes the time to put me first by playing his April Fool's surprises on me. Like the time he put my keys in Jello. Or the time he made me a tray of brownies. <sighs> brownies. And who can forget the old and screw the top off the salt surprise? <laughs> Chris is a funny guy. Hey, you know what I think? And this is just between you and me. Chris is the one who turned all my stuff upside down. It wasn't a room quake after all. This must have taken a really long time. I mean, he turned all my stuff upside down. I do need to call my mom. This must have taken a lot of work. I'm not sure that it's fair that Chris keeps playing all these April Fool's month surprises on me and I haven't even got him once. I don't deserve this. What I deserve is to get him back. <laughs> Was that my toaster? The story today is about Jesus when he prayed in the garden while his friends couldn't even stay awake to keep watch. Jesus didn't deserve that. I wonder what he did about it. Stay tuned. I'm gonna come up with a way to turn the tables on Chris. Chris is gonna notice when he goes in his room, the tables aren't the way he remembered. I'm gonna get the revenge I deserve. I'm gonna get the revenge I deserve, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, okay. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 36 through 56. For months, the Jewish religious leaders had been plotting to silence Jesus. He called us pretenders, snakes! On the Sunday before Passover, Jesus entered Jerusalem to great cheers from the crowds. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! But even as the crowd swarmed in to see what Jesus would do and say, one of Jesus' closest followers, Judas, went to the religious leaders with a very sneaky plan. What are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? How about a cool 30 pieces of silver? Jesus knew these plans, but he also knew that his mission was to face those who hated him and let them take him without defending himself. 
He prepared his closest friends for this during a Passover meal, and then afterwards led them out of the city toward the Mount of Olives. Judas had already left them. In a little while, you will no longer see me. Then after a little while, you will see me. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. The air cooled as the evening darkened. This very night, you will all turn away because of me. Peter, the most outspoken of Jesus' friends, quickened his step and tightened his hand on the sword he was carrying. All the others may turn away because of you, but I never will. What I'm about to tell you is true. It will happen tonight. Before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you don't know me. I may have to die with you, but I will never say I don't know you. Me too. Same. <sighs> By the time Jesus and his friends reached the Garden of Gethsemane, they were exhausted. Sit here while I go over there and pray. As the other disciples settled in on the cold, rough ground, Jesus took Peter, James, and John along with him to a grove of ancient olive trees. The weight of what was coming pressed down on him. My soul is very sad. I feel close to death. Stay here. Keep watch with me. We're here for you. We got this. Prayers. The three friends found seats among the knotted tree roots, and Jesus went on a little further. Then suddenly, he fell down on the ground, face first into the dirt. Words poured out from deep inside. My father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering away from me. But let what you want be done, not what I want. After a short time, Jesus returned to his friends. They had all fallen into restless sleep. Jesus touched Peter's arm. Huh? Just, uh, we're just, uh, we're just praying. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray. Then you won't fall into sin when you are tempted. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. We'll stay awake this time. Got you covered. Again, Jesus threw himself down to pray. His pain was so deep, blood and sweat beaded on his forehead. My father, is it possible for this cup to be taken away? But if I must drink it, may what you want be done. Jesus returned to his friends once more to find them still sleeping. The agony in his spirit forced Jesus to lay his heart out to God once more. He prayed the desperate words again, begging God to take away what was coming. And at the same time, revealing his complete trust in God's plan. Let what you want be done, not what I want. At last, Jesus knew the time had come. He returned to find Peter, James, and John buried deep in sleep. Beyond them, his other followers slept too. Are you still sleeping and resting? The disciples struggled through a fog of sleep, blinking and yawning. Below them, torchlight showed an angry mob climbing up the hill. The men were waving swords and clubs, shouting as they came. Look, the hour has come. The Son of Man is about to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Here comes the one who is handing me over to them. Jesus' friends staggered to their feet, and Peter clutched his sword. As the mob marched closer, they could see the man in front of the mob. It was their friend Judas. Judas, what are you doing? The mob had been sent by the Jewish religious leaders. Judas had already explained to them that he would greet Jesus with a kiss, so they would know exactly which man to arrest. Greetings, teacher. Judas ignored the other disciples and went directly to Jesus, kissing him on the cheek in greeting. Jesus drew back and looked Judas directly in the face. Friend, do what you came to do. The mob surged forward as the disciples just stood there, frozen and confused. As men grabbed Jesus, Peter suddenly sprang to life, awkwardly drawing his sword. Should we use our swords? Peter didn't wait for an answer, but he struck out wildly. His blade sliced right through the ear of the high priest's servant. Oh! Stop this! Jesus touched the servant's ear. Immediately, he was healed. Put your sword back in its place. Do you think I can't ask my father for help? He would send an army of more than 70,000 angels right away. But then how would the scriptures come true? They say it must happen in this way. 
Jesus turned back to the mob and the men who held him. They hovered there, uncertain, in the flickering light of their torches. Am I leading a band of armed men against you? Do you have to come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courtyard teaching, and you didn't arrest me. But all this has happened so that the words of the prophets would come true. No one could respond to Jesus. Instead, they arrested him and led him away. And his friends who said they'd be with him through anything ran away. Jesus made the choice that would bring life to everyone, but that would cost him everything. Somebody's gonna get a mustard-filled donut later, and I'm finally gonna get what I deserve. <laughs> hey, did you know that Jesus didn't deserve all that stuff that happened to him? Like when his friends ditched him when he needed them? And when those people arrested Jesus even though he never did anything he wasn't supposed to? And then, when he was put on that cross, I mean, what? Jesus could like, calm a storm with his hand and bring dead people back to life. Why do you let all that bad stuff happen to him? Turns out, it was all a part of the plan. When God created the world a whole bunch of years ago, he knew people were gonna need help if they were gonna have a relationship with him. So, he told people he was sending someone who would have to pay for all the stuff they did wrong. And that someone was Jesus. But it's not like Jesus wanted to go through all that bad stuff. In the garden, he was like, God, any chance there's a different way to save the world and stuff? But then Jesus was like, it's not about what I want, God, because what you want is better. So what did Jesus do to his friends in the garden who let him down? He put them first. And what did Jesus do to those people who arrested him for no reason? He put them first. And what did Jesus do for you, me, and the whole world? He put us first. It's kind of an upside down way of doing things. Putting somebody else first for no reason when they don't earn it or when they may not even deserve it. I bet we can put people first like Jesus did. You know, we could let someone else pick what restaurant to go to or what video game to play. We could give up our place in line sometimes. Or when someone surprises us by turning our room upside down, we could choose to not get even. So. Here's the one thing I learned today. Put others first. It's not about what we deserve. It's not about what we want. What God wants is better. So, April Fool's month or not, I'm gonna put people first. And Chris, if you're watching, keep the surprises coming. But I won't be taking my revenge. I'll just be sitting here, getting what I truly deserve. A delicious mustard-filled donut. Oh, that's some good stuff right there. That's some good mustard. See you next time. Boys and girls, we really enjoyed having you with us today. And we want to leave you with one more thing. And it's actually the most important thing. We want you to know Jesus. We want you to actually come into a relationship with God. Because churches is not about a building or a place. It's about your heart. And so Jesus did something very special for us. You see, this egg represents our life before Christ comes in. There's lying, anger, uh, disobedience, sin of all kind. And sin is simply anything that we think, say, or do that doesn't please God. And even if you did everything perfect, which you couldn't do, we're still considered sinners or in sin until Jesus comes into our heart. And so what Jesus did, God knew that we were, weren't perfect and that we never could be and that there's no amount of good works that we could do to qualify to go to heaven, to qualify to be a child of God. So God did something very wonderful. He sent his son, Jesus. And so what Jesus did, he came to earth as a man he shed his blood. He never sinned. He never did anything wrong, but he took the place and paid the price for sin so that we could have eternal life. And when Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood for our sin and rose again, here's what he did. It's like he destroyed all the sin that had blocked us from being in a relationship with God. His blood, his death on the cross, the whoopings that he took on his body 
were for our sin. And so the line, all the things that we did, when we stand before God, they don't exist anymore. Jesus paid the price for our sin. And so when God looks at us, he doesn't see all those things that were there before. He sees us just like Jesus, pure without sin. So let's pray this prayer and ask Jesus to come into your heart if you want to, so that you can have a new life just like this. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for sending your son Jesus, whose blood washed away all the sin that we could ever imagine, all the sin that we were trying to get away with or get away from in our own strength. And so God, your word, the Bible says, if we believe that Jesus is your son and we believe that he died for our sin and we believe that three days after he died, he rose again and he's alive. And if we believe that his blood was enough, your word, the Bible says, will be saved. If we believe it in our heart and say it with our mouth. So boys and girls, I want you to say this with me. If you really believe that, I want you to say, dear God, I believe that Jesus is your son. And I believe that perfect Jesus shed his perfect blood so that I could be saved. So that when you see me, you don't see all the things I've ever done. You see me just like you see Jesus. So God, I believe that. I believe that Jesus died for my sin. I believe that he shed his blood. I believe that three days after he died, he rose again and he's alive now. He said, if we believe it in our heart and say it with our mouth, we shall be saved. So Father, I believe it in my heart. I'm saying it with my mouth. I thank you that I'm saved. I thank you that I have God's help, your help while I'm here on earth. I thank you that there's nothing I can do to make myself good before you. You've already done it through your son, Jesus. And Father, I thank you that someday you either come back for me or when I die, I'll go to heaven. So I receive that gift of salvation right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Boys and girls, if you prayed that prayer, let us know. We have a special booklet we want to send you to let you know how to grow in your faith, how to become a, a person that can take advantage of all that God's already done for you. Take advantage of God's grace in your life. So ask your mom and dad if you can reach out to us. We'll send you some information and a new birth certificate that you will have two birthdays, your physical birth when you we're born to this earth and your spiritual birth. We want to know. Talk to you later. Bye. Boys and girls, we have had a wonderful day with you today. We love you. Come back on Wednesday night and Sunday. And happy Palm Sunday. Hi. I'm Sister Cortland. I hope you guys enjoyed the videos and the lessons today. Make sure you grab your mommy and your daddy and head on over to the broadcast to watch service. Oh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more tips and updates. Bye!